In this video, I'll show you how to take two images and quickly tell the difference between them. My name is Robert Shane, and on this channel, I give you solutions to your tech problems, how-to videos, and tutorials. I've recently been streaming the entire process of making my YouTube videos, so if you want to check that out, the link is in the description. I don't want to waste any more of your time, so let's get into it. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to be comparing a contract that I have on file with a contract that I had sent to a client. The client could have possibly changed up some words in the contract and I want to know if that's the case. So to do that, I'm going to be opening up page eight of our contract and then page eight of the document that he sent back and it looked like he had scanned in the document and maybe he changed some stuff around before he uh, printed it off. So we're just going to compare these two documents and see if that was the case. So I'm going to click open. Our original contract was a PDF. So you're going to get this menu. Just click OK to bring it in. Since it was a PDF, the background is transparent and we want this to be white. I actually made a action for this that you can download from the description. Once you download it, you would have to extract it and then click on this little hamburger menu and go to load actions and then find it inside of your folder that you downloaded. Once you download it, click on make background white and then run it. And that will just turn the background white like that. And then over on his document, it looked like he, I mean, it's rotated a little bit. I don't know sure, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but stuff like this happens a lot in the real world. So to fix it, the first thing I'm gonna do is double click on this background layer to get rid of that lock icon. And now we want to rotate it. We want to, we want to undo his crazy rotations. So let's zoom in. You can zoom in with alt scroll wheel. I'm going to put a, I'm going to drop in a guideline just underneath one of the first letters. And then what I'm going to do is back out quite a bit and hit control T. If you don't see this little pivot point icon, what you can do is make sure that this checkbox is checked and it should appear. I'm going to take this, drag it up, and I'm going to place it right underneath this first letter. And, and now when we rotate it, it rotates from that point. So what I want to do is just rotate this so this so that the bottom of these letters match up with this guideline right so about like that maybe a little a little less somewhere in there also make sure that your interpolation is set to something other than nearest neighbor or else you get see like this uh how this line looks right now there's like a like a line going through that you're actually it's actually going to look like that when you press enter however if we press enter now it kind of fades those out blurs them a little bit so it looks better okay so now that we have the rotation right we're going to click the move tool and i'm going to drag it in to our original document and roughly line them up then i'm going to come over here and set the opacity to 50% and then I'm going to zoom in and line up the top left corner of this X with the rest of it. And it looks like he's also scaled it down by a little bit. Now this also happens in the real world quite often because people will, when they go to print something, they'll choose like scale to fit media and that can sometimes mess up stuff. So we're going to have to undo that as well. We can fix that by just matching up one of the corners, which I've already done. Then we're gonna hit Control T. We need this pivot point to be at this X, at this top left corner of this X. And I'll back out. And I just want to bring this down. Now you need to hold Alt and then drag this corner. And when you do that, it will scale from that pivot point. So I'm just gonna bring this until until these are matched up and that's that's looking pretty good now all right so now when we back out 
the top of this document is looking really good. So I'm going to change the opacity back to 100%. Now this is the trick that I want to show. So if you switch this over to difference, it's basically going to take the first image, subtract it from the second image, and if there's no difference, well that's going to be zero, so that color is going to be black. So all this white, that means there's no difference. And then wherever you see white is where there is some difference. Now on this example, now up here, this is actually fine. This just, these, uh, these white marks, these kind of looks like strokes around black letters, white strokes around black letters. That's fine. All that means if we switch it back to normal is that there's a little bit of fuzziness between the original. However, if we, if we come down here, it looks like there's a lot of, a lot of white. So this almost becomes like a heat map. You can think of you can think of it as a heat map where if you have a lot of white, that area indicates that something has been changed. So now we know, okay, we really need to focus starting here. We need to focus on this document and see what he has changed. So if we if we look at the original, we have this line. If we look at the one that he gave us, it looks like he's added an infinite money glitch. The landlord agrees to pay the tenant any amount of money the tenant requests immediately. No, 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 no. See, that's not going to fly, right? But if we hadn't checked this document, we wouldn't know that. And sitting here and comparing line by line is just too tedious when you have hundreds of documents. So this is, this is one way you can check graphically. In a real world situation, these documents are all digital. They're all text-based and the computer can check them automatically but in the real world it's not always perfect this is a serious example of what can be done with this technique and a not so serious example you can use this technique to solve spot the different puzzles so this top layer is a little bit different than this bottom layer and if i select difference you can quickly see what's the difference between the two images it can also be used to compare the quality of two different images so this top layer I've compressed quite a bit with JPEG compression while the bottom one is the original image. And if I want to see what that looks like, we can switch this over to difference. And now we can read that, okay, the background isn't being changed all that much while the foreground is being qu changed quite a bit. Well guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helps solve your problem. Have a good one and take care.